Hello, everybody. Welcome back to This Week in Innovation. Today, I have two very interesting guests. I have Joey uh, Rubenstein, CEO of Supplive, and Ken Dowd. Joey, welcome to the podcast. Thank you so much, Jeff. It's great to be here. Tell me a little bit about yourself and what you're up to, what your company's up to. Sure. I studied uh, supply chain and entrepreneurship at the University of Maryland, go Terps. And basically after that, one of my friends approached me and he was running this independent retailer. And he realizes, oh shoot, the way that we're doing our supply chain is really problematic. Uh, everything was very manual. There were all sorts of issues in terms of the way in which they ordered, how they ordered, from who they were ordering, when they were ordering, you name it, they had problems with it. We started speaking to hundreds and hundreds of different people that were within the industry, trying to understand if this is a real problem or just something that was localized. Turns out it's a huge problem. So we dove in, you know, heads first. And basically what we're trying to do is we're trying to redefine their ordering process from their vendors and make their lives a million times easier. So let me understand when you talk about independent, what's your definition of independent retailer? An independent retailer is basically uh, one mom and pop store all the way up to a, a chain of like 10 stores. Very interesting. And, and today, those retailers, I'm thinking about my brother's place. It's probably a lot of paper. I'm not even sure there's Excel sheets. There's probably, you're probably re trying, to, trying to replace physical paper. Yeah. So actually, initially, we started out by interviewing like in depth, like 100 different independent retailers. 93% of them were not using any sort of technology. They were using either Google Sheets or pen and paper. Uh, the majority of independent retailers received their uh, basically their orders through what's like paper. Like they actually get invoices, physical paper invoices. That's not to say that there are people that aren't, you know, familiar with technology and willing to adopt technology. It's just that up until now, they have been underserved. So basically, the technology that, that we would be replacing is the technology that comes with the point of sales. So in every point of sale, that's basically where people swipe their credit cards. A lot of times they have these tack on supply chain software, but they're very ineffective and they suffer from the same problem that actually all the current technologies suffer from, even all the way up to SAP, which is that they require a massive amount of manual data entry. So if I want to get my system up and loaded on Square, for example, I would have to type in each individual product that's within my store. So let's say I have 10,000 products. It would take me 180 hours, which is seven full 24-hour days just to type in my products. And that's not to mention when I'm actually getting the stuff into my store and I need to update the inbound inventory. While there is technology that is technically within the stores, people don't use it by and large because it's just too cumbersome. And I think basically what we did is we built a, a product that addresses all those things. It allows basically minimal da manual data entry, and that's the long and short of it. And now we're just, just getting running. We have a number of stores that are signed up. We're signed with a couple of vendors as well. But the small market, as an aside, is very large as well. There were 156,000 stores in our sort of initial starting market which is to say convenience stores, uh, groceries and liquor stores. And that's really just the beginning because this is also applicable to uh, sports stores, sporting goods stores. It's applicable to toy stores. It's applicable to you name it. As long as they have barcodes, it works for us. And uh, things are really looking good. Yeah, actually, that was my next question. There is no segment that you need to worry about. You're not focusing on grocery or, or anything. Anything with a barcode works for you. Well, in the short run, obviously, you need to stay focused in order to build a viable business and all that stuff. So we're starting with the grocery and the, the three I named before, which is grocery, convenience stores, and liquor, because they have a similar product set. But then we're going to work our way out as time goes on. Very interesting. Now, um, Ken uh, Dowd is on the line with us, and Ken is on the advisory board. But I wonder if you could unpack a little bit how you two got connected. And Ken, maybe you could tell us about your background, because I, I couldn't even begin to do it justice. I met Joey early on, about four or five months ago. Very aggressive team. I met the whole team by Zoom. What I liked about they did early on was they started small and had a lot of lessons learned on how they were working their process. And as you can see, they're building to larger efforts. But I like advising these guys, talking to them. I'm a retired major general in the Army. Did all the logistics, most in Afghanistan, in Iraq, in the 2014 time frame, 2012. And Joey asked me to jump on the team and advise them on ideas and thoughts and way ahead. But I would just tell you, these guys are very aggressive uh, and they do a real good job on lessons learned. And then they build that into their process. An aggressive team for an old guy like this, watching these guys try to improve process always makes me excited. What's really interesting to me is for such a young startup to have such a strong advisory board, that's what really, can, same thing, I got a call out of, or I got an email out of LinkedIn out of nowhere for some, some young guy doing something up in Palo Alto and I get a bunch of those. And for whatever reason, I went up and 
a lot of it was because of, of the advisory board that, that uh, Joey had already put together. When I'm talking to startups, that's I highly recommend putting a, an advisory board together. And I think in this case, he hit it out of the park with some very big names. Yeah. Can, I can't miss the opportunity to ask you some, some military questions. What can retail learn from your experience? You have, you, you worked in, or you actually, you managed led probably the most sophisticated supply chain in the history of man, I would think, U.S. US military. What, what can we learn in retail from what, you, what you've done? One was bringing in expertise from industry to show us uh, how we might be able to do our processes and procedures in the supply chain. One thing I did as a GO was work with industry on ideas and things they might already have uh, figured out and then as you talk about the supply chain and things like that, we're coming out of Iraq in 2011. We put a lot of this IT and processes that we learned from other large IT industries in there to make our effort coming out of there very easily done. And then the supply accountability of all that equipment and trucks and personnel was outstanding and so I, I just see what Joey's pulling together. There may be ways we can link up on ideas to always improve both processes in DOD and retail. Yeah, wow. that's, that's exciting. I'm an old supply chain person myself, Mervyn's Target, and uh, lived, and, lived and died in the supply chain. And I guess I'm happy and probably a little sad at the same time to see supply chain really move to the forefront, and not just because of the amazing things we've always done, but the fact now the entire world realizes how delicate a supply chain is. So any, any expertise that, that we can drag into retail, I think is just phenomenal. And I think, Jeff, a lot of it happens too, like your background, is relationships you build through your time in the military, through your time in industry. There's always great ideas out there. And I think leaders have to take time to listen to those ideas and see if they'll help the process as we move forward. Yeah, very interesting. So, Joey, I want to go back to the question about um, advisory teams and advisory boards. What, where did you get the idea to, to go after some pretty big names? And if you want to drop some of the other names on your advisory board, feel free to. Absolutely. Basically what happened, we're a young company and it's really important to be able to look at your company honestly and say, see what the weaknesses are. It's really important to have people that have time in these industries and that understand these industries really well. So that way, even just the little things like where you can ask them questions like, hey, how on earth do does this part of the supply chain work? Because because people that have actually done things over a course of 30 years, they obviously understand things more in depth than somebody that is coming in fresh. Again, there are different advantages and disadvantages of each perspective. There's actually a podcaster named Greg White with Supply Chain Now, and he was talking about how the most successful startups have supply chain startups, generally have people with fresh eyes and then ex excellent advisory boards. So I took that kind of to heart. I reached out you know, to Ken, basically took a flyer. I said, listen, we're trying to do something really cool. You have a lot of experience in this. Would love to get you on board. And then uh, we also added on Maxime Cohen, so Maxime is one of Rethink Retail's 100 retail influencers of 2022. It's a good list. And yeah. Oh, he's, yeah. yeah I, <laughs> another guy's on there. I wonder who that is. wonder how I found your name. No, anyways, but basically Maxime absolutely crushes it in terms of retail analytics. He's one of the foremost experts in that. He wrote actually one of the books on a predictive like analytics and, and how to best guess what you should be stocking. So he's a, a really great expert and that fills a strategic need of ours to understand because analytics are a really important part of, of what any you know company in the space is doing. And then we also added on Levy. So Edith Simchilevi is part of almost like a royal family of supply chain. She's really one of these longstanding experts. She knows everybody in the supply chain. She also exited a couple supply chain startups herself and basically wrote one of the original textbooks on supply chain. So people that really genuinely understand it, we actually added another really excellent advisor yet, but things are things are just getting close right now. So I'm not, I'm not going to go into details, but follow our LinkedIn. You'll see it there. And uh, yeah, basically each of them really adds something special to the team. They've all proven themselves as really incredible assets, people that really want to help. And I think that sort of the approach that I take is that it's it's good idea to get as many smart people in the room as possible. Because if if you get challenges to your opinions, so what ends up happening is that your opinions get stronger as a result. That's our philosophy as a company. And it's been working out really excellently. Like we've turbocharged our business in a lot of different ways. 
through that approach. So we keep, like Ken was saying, we keep an open ear and an open heart. And that's, so that's been really effective. And I think that's, that's probably a good principle just in general. It might be a good principle. I don't see it done all that often. So <laughs> congratulations on that. Um, if you're listening to people that know what they're talking about, that's, uh, I think you're about 10 miles ahead from what I've seen over the 30 years or so. Ken, I wonder if we, can we get any fun supply chain stories, military supply chain stories, just maybe one from your experiences? I guess the biggest one and the one I'm proud of the most is the, the Iraq drawdown in 2011. I got to be in charge of that, oversaw uh, all the efforts coming out of Iraq. And we had truck convoys going in there. We had airlifts going in there. But we actually got airmen to drive our trucks because we had so much stuff to get out of Iraq. And then the other thing was working with the Iraqis and the Kuwaitis to make sure we all cooperated to graduate. So I can remember standing on the last the border of Iraq and Kuwait, watching the last MRAP come out of Iraq. And I was just hoping that darn thing wouldn't break down. And it rolled out of there. It was a great day. But I had many of your friends on the sideline from the press watching those MRAPs move out. And I was just so proud of our soldiers, airmen, Marines, and Navy folks who made all that happen. And it was all about uh, teamwork. So that was an exciting one with all that stuff coming out of Iraq in 2011. And President Obama had just made the decision a couple of months before. So we had to really execute, plan, train, and rehearse. And it went very well. Well, wow. hopefully, hopefully all your experiences in retail are maybe a little less dramatic than that, but uh, there'll, there'll be challenges and maybe in some regards. So it's going to be interesting to watch how you folks run. Joey, what, where, what regions are you operating in or which, which regions do you have customer wins at now? And can you talk about any customers at this point? Sure. We are in Israel and then we're also in the, the Northeast of the U.S., so we have a few businesses out in New York, a few businesses out in the Maryland area, and we're expanding, trying to take that whole area. So basically, they're using our platform. They're really enjoying it. They're getting a lot of a lot of you know pleasure and a lot of I would say gains as a result of what we've built. And hopefully, we'll be able to match up with these guys and provide them the best experience possible. Because, in my opinion, independent retail and the conception of small business is probably the most important thing for a functioning country. The idea that people have financial independence and are able to run their own lives, to me, that's really important. Interesting along those lines, I just listened to a, a report talking about, as, we, as hopefully everyone realized at this point, we're in a baby uh, formula problem. And uh, somebody reporting out of New York City was saying, hard to find it at CVS, but all the local bodegas, for whatever reason, and ethnic bodegas, tend to have a lot of baby formula. I'm not sure why that is. Maybe just people don't know it's there. But if anybody doubted the importance of the supply chain over the last two years, they haven't been watching the news. So kudos for working with that very important link that most of us in retail have either started in independent retail, have family members in, are going back into the independent retail. But boy, what a backbone of the, the U.S. Kudos on that. Hey, as we wrap up, I want to ask you, Joey, I want to ask you a couple of things. The last two questions. What advice would you offer for young entrepreneurs? What would you say to young people getting started? First and foremost, the best way to learn is by actually doing things and by listening to people that have done things. You can always re, you can always iterate, right? You can always come up with and improve ideas. But unless you're actually out there and testing them out in the marketplace, so you're not going to really know what ideas are good and what ideas are bad. And this follows basically this uh, line of philosophy from this book that's very well known in you know, the entrepreneurship world, which is like uh, The Lean Startup uh, by Eric Ries. Fantastic book. And basically what it talks about is you as an entrepreneur, what you really want to do is you want to get the quickest product that you possibly can out into the marketplace that's viable, the minimum viable product, MVP. And then you want to basically see how that's reacted to. In certain circumstances, it means that you need to cut things out of the product. In certain circumstances, you need to add things to the product. But just by having having the exposure and actually seeing things on the ground, that's really important. And then the second thing is, I think that people really discount their own agency going into a philosophical perspective. I think that people have a lot more control over their lives than you know many people would like to admit. And agency is really critical. Like at the end of the day, each one of us could say, "I have this idea. I want to go make it a reality." And just because people say it's you know not a good idea, maybe they don't understand. And sometimes a lot of people can say a certain message, and it. it turns out to be completely not correct. 
And that actually is something that you, I, I think pretty much every early stage startup probably experiences a lot. We're all speaking to hundreds of different investors and, and venture people, and they're all giving you all the doubt in the world. But then you'll see the people that manage to get through that, because even the most successful, with a few exceptions, even the most successful ones, they all have the exact same sort of you know trajectory, which is to say there's a lot of doubt at the beginning, then things start moving forward and you keep plodding along. So then all of a sudden that doubt turns into, huh, this is interesting. And really, it's just about proving yourself and not really listening to, I would say, negative feedback as long as you've done your homework. Awesome. And last question, what skills uh, that you use now do you wish you would have paid more attention to back in college or the early part of your career? In college, I would say, number one, finance and accounting are important skills. But that being said, I think that also more of a like kind of uh, philosophical view. And th- I think that kind of taking an outside you know, perspective and figuring out what you're good at and what you really want to focus on and figuring that out as soon as possible, uh, that's a good thing. Because indecision really doesn't get you very far. And it makes sense if people want to check out their different options. But I think that if you have a clear idea of what you want to do, and then just work really hard to get to that idea as soon as possible. So what you're, what you're doing is life essentially is cumulative. As you build in a particular direction, you're going to be more and more. So I would say I would have paid more attention to the things that would have really pushed me in the direction that I'm going right now. I would have paid a little bit more attention to the supply chain aspect of what I'm doing. Once I discovered that I really liked supply chain, which was pretty early on uh, relative to marketing, I wish I'd focus a little bit more on that, I think. Fantastic. That's a good place to put a pin in it. Joey, Ken, thanks so much for for uh, sharing your thoughts and uh, telling us your story. And I wish you, as a, as a proud uh, customer of many independent retailers, I, I wish you the best of luck. And I hope you can help uh, solve some of, the, some of their supply chain problems. Thanks. Thanks for coming on board. Thanks so much, Jeff. Thanks, Jeff. Thanks for tuning into today's episode. For more info, refer to the pod notes below. If you enjoyed this episode, please consider giving us a five-star rating and review. It really helps us grow. I'm your host, Jeff Roster, analyst at large. If you want to connect, follow us on Twitter at JeffPR or at Brian Nation, or connect with us on LinkedIn. Visit my website at 